So if you're of a nervous disposition and you don't like looking at horrific corrosion on BMWs, especially E46 M3s, then I'd recommend you go and watch something else. However, if you don't mind watching 33 minutes of me poking holes in the underside of a 2005 E46 M3 Coupe manual transmission, 74,000 miles, then continue watching. This was going to be the start of an intro for one of our traditional RACP repair and reinforcement processes, but it didn't quite go to plan. And if you watch to the end of the video, you'll see what happened to this vehicle. But this is the intro that uh, we first shot and then later on realized this, this car unfortunately isn't going to be able to repair it. So enjoy. And it's in with us for, um, like I say, the RACP work. Um, and also corrosion removal because as these cars are getting a bit older um, they are suffering from decent amounts of corrosion setting in. All cars seem to be quite different. Uh, some cars don't suffer with much at all but still have corrosion. I don't think I've seen an E46 for as many years now that hasn't had some form of corrosion but some are worse than others. Some seem to seem to get more corrosion if they're coastal cars or um, or have done some I don't know, some, some heavy winter work maybe with lots of extended usage of salts on the road where it stayed on the vehicle. But this car, being a 2005 uh, and with only 74,000 miles, has a, a decent amount of build-up corrosion. Now you can see here next to the left rear uh, subframe mounting point, this area, which is normally an area where we'd start cleaning first of all, I'll show you the areas where we can have original stress cracks on the RACP. It's unable to at the moment because there are some black sort of spray on Schultz uh, areas trying to um, obviously trying to protect or, or even cover some of the corrosion. As we know spraying stuff on top of corrosion might visually make it look a little bit better but obviously doesn't solve anything. The corrosion is still present underneath and much like it is in every area where it's corroding it's quite strong violent corroding colors the the typical browns burgundies it's uh, it's pretty nasty stuff and and it's been eaten away unfortunately at this vehicle i mean this might turn into quite a long introduction video because we're going to go through most of the areas of concern on the vehicle it's always good to show in its true light to to show contrast from when we start the process to then what we're able to offer back to the owner at the end of the process but also to highlight to people nowadays that corrosion is a real serious issue this is the sort of thing that are, are killing cars off um, you know many many e30s and even e36s that i've personally owned um, that i've had to scrap because of corrosion just being too strong i've bought them for projects uh, harvested the engine and then the chassis are just useless because there's just hard too much corrosion and I'm sorry to say but uh, I've got an E46 myself an M3 and I'm in a perfect position to say because I've done a restoration on my own M3 that corrosion is now rife in E46s so it's not meant to be any sort of scare story it's just reality that um, we are at a stage now on certain cars and this is one of them where we're not just carrying out work or RACP work um, we are on a sort of a rescue mission to save the vehicle. There is no real other way to put it. You are absolutely having to save these cars from going to the scrapyard due to MOT failures and corrosion problems. So here we are in the left hand side wheel arch area. Wheel is off. We can see that there's a 20 mil grommet here that we've taken out and the seam sealer which looked body color, a little bit black, Imagine that there with a grommet around it. You wouldn't have really seen any corrosion at all until we popped the, seam, the grommet out, started peeling the seam sealer, which should be super stable. And the corrosion has been tracking under there for a long time. And it's caused, although it's surface corrosion, on the inside of that edge, we will have quite a bit. And you can tell how strong it is because it moves down into the area that would normally be hidden by the plastic side skirts, which will be taken off at the moment. And we can see there's a hole developed without, I don't think we've even had to touch this, it's just how we found it. Um, so we've got a hole in the seal section. And then this area here seems to be filler because we've got some filler here. So it's obviously had a, a bodywork before, which is no problem because that sort of thing happens. Arches get rusty and people have to do repairs. This area here on the inner arch, on the outer arch has also had a filler repair. Um, but the inner arch, I'm afraid, is obviously not been repaired it seems because we've got sections missing up there there's a hole and then there's gap there 
and obviously that rust line is an evidence of a section missing on the inside arch. So even though the outside has been tidied up at a body shop, um, it's, it's not solved the problem because the inner arches are the ones that have failed on this car. You can see the gap in nature of it up there. Possibly similar on the right hand side. Yes, very similar actually. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see the inner and the outer arches missing from here to here. Then we've got a section missing here and then all this bubbling underneath the seam sealer is rust. So corrosion, it's been creeping underneath the seam sealer and it's just eaten away the inner arch. You can see how bubbly the outer folded arch is. So this one is particularly poor as well. Not only is it gonna need an inner arch replacement panel from BMW, but it needs outer arches as well because the filler amount in the arch means that there'll be nothing to weld the inner one to. It will need fabrication or an outer panel or a quarter panel even. You can see there the gaps where it's sort of eating itself away. We fear the same thing is gonna happen on this right hand side, much so where we've taken off the seam sealer. And do remember this is a 2005 model. So there is really no M3 that's um, sort of uh, available to um, avoid this if they've lived in a harsher environment. We've got a hole in the end of the seal here, which isn't normal. And obviously lots of corrosion trapped in this joint system just here where the inner arch panel meets the outer arch. And then going down the seal where the side skirts have been taken off, we've got the jacking point typical problem, which is not only corroded, but the inner jacking point structure has significantly creased inwards. So this jacking pad, which should be in the car horizontal all of its life, is now creased and tipped inwards because the stress um, has managed to buckle the outer panel section. That's twofold situation. That's one because it's just an inferior design, the internal jacking support. And secondly, the outer is corroded and therefore weakened. So it just then tips up. So the seal sections at the rear need replacing because they need cutting off because there's deep corrosion trapped in between both layers, but also because it needs pulling this section, the inner support back down to a horizontal level and then reinforcing and then re-welding back on. So that's another area of concern. Um, the rear train arm pockets, well, that's pretty much typical nowadays, not the cradle, but the actual pocket, which is part of the chassis heavy corrosion staining around there. And we know for sure, once we take that cradle out and the rear train arm bush out, that whole pocket will just be totally corroded and also trapped on the other side as well. So that will need drilling out and replacing for a new panel. Whilst we're in that area, we can just see a peek ahead into what is the fuel tank area, which is very hard to see because the fuel tank is under or behind this trailing arm. That is part of the seat panel which is um, sort of the sculpted seat where the rear passengers sit. And that's a, it's not coming out very clearly on this video, but that is a large amount of corrosion coloring, which is creeped underneath the seam sealer, which tells us that the edges of the panel where it meets the chassis leg inside the car are gonna be seriously corroded, as are the fuel tank and brake pipe brackets, um, significant corrosion on those which is, again, is tried to be painted over, which probably helps for a minor point of time whilst, whilst the car is having, say, an MOT or brake pipe repair. But look at that, that's, uh, I don't know if that's metal or just pure corrosion build up. Yeah, it's corrosion. But um, that is all the way around the brackets, which have got an important job to do. They're carrying the weight of the fuel tank between two of those brackets. The brake pipe bracket is not so uh, important, but still heavily corroded. And then we go on to the rear axle carrier panel. We've got significant issues here, which might well be surface, but some of that is so strong there, it will remain in the metal grain. When you take all that looseness off, uh, there will be peaks and troughs where the metal is changed shape and the corrosion is in the troughs and therefore will stay there unless you thin the metal. But thinning an RACP that's already at risk of fatigue is, is a bad idea. So we've got problems there that need counteracting. The seamed edges are just, just corroding basically, where the wheel arch panel is spot welded and MIG welded to the RACP. I mean, that's not too bad an issue if you can just say it's corroded on the outer edges, but it's actually in the seamed joints, which you cannot get to. There is no way to get to the seam joints unless you replace the panel. But that then refers back to what I was saying previously, where we're not just 
tidying things up nowadays or welding reinforcement plates. On some models and cars, and this one particularly, you are on a, uh, a restoration mission to save the car because there isn't a great amount more that this car could probably endure before an MOT tester uh, kills it off effectively. Another hole that's developed there at the lower seal. This jacking pad as well, which you can't quite see because the under trays aren't off yet, but that jacking pad is tipped upwards. So we know that one's creased, which means that that seal section, the rear section needs replacing, cutting off, straightening, reinforcing, re-welding. Um, so at the back of the vehicle, as well as the arches that need repairing and the inner turrets area where the shock absorbers go on to, um, we've got concerns of random corrosion in spot welded areas on the RACP, which probably are signs that there's a, a circular spot weld which is cracked and then the corrosion has got in between that and blown it open. And if you just look at how flaky some of this is, this is the RACP directly above the subframe there. And if I just show you sort of how loose some of these bits are, this is extreme corrosion. This isn't even seam sealer left, this is just metal which has been left to corrode, unfortunately, which is probably why some of the black paint has been sprayed on to try and slow it down and visually make it look more appealing from this view. But obviously in the areas where it hasn't had any paint on, it's quite strong. Um, so much so that, like I say, thinning an RACP to remove that metal corrosion that's in the grain is, is a no-no. So we've got a problem there where the reinforcement plates are gonna do something, but actually welding reinforcement plates to what will be thinned metal, which will still have corrosion pitting in it, is, is, a con is a considerable problem. And there are probably many places out there that will just put the plates on and, and not really care too much about the corrosion areas or just you know, cover it in such wet wax or shorts that it probably won't break through the corrosion much again. But deep down, you still know the car is in a poor state due to the corrosion level that's, that's been growing. Um, here we've got the similar sort of thing near where the left hand side brake pipes come up. Um, this bracket which has been painted over, probably by the people that I'd imagine replaced the brake pipe, but um, the sections of the, the car just sort of flaking off and falling off. Uh, really uh, unfortunate repair here. That's the brake pipe, the original brake pipe, which you can see how corroded it is. It's almost furry with corrosion and it comes through around the side of the fuel tanks um, and goes up to supply the rear axle with brake fluid, but um, they've obviously been rusty and somebody's replaced them, but rather than replace them correctly, uh, we've got a join in there, which is a copper join, but rather than going up around the fuel tank, they've just sort of nibbled out a section of the fuel tank tray and just gone the quickest route first and just gone straight above the, uh, uh, under the tank and above the under tray and just come out there completely loose you know, I think that's an MOT failure or at least an advisory in itself. Badly rooted, so a little bit of a problem there during the previous workmanship areas. So fuel tank area itself, we haven't even stripped down yet, but we're expecting to find decent corrosion. I can already see it coming through in there. And I think the two grommet areas underneath the rear seat panel, hidden by the fuel tank at the moment, are going to be significantly out of round. And what were probably 30 mil grommets or 35s are now going to be jagged and quite large. So that's a problem. Um, then we go on to sort of corrosion moving into the central section, just to give you an idea where we are now. We've sort of talked about the rear end of the vehicle. We're not even concentrating on the hardware. I mean, hardware is just hardware. That can be taken off, blasted, replaced. What is that? We've got like a gap in the diff. I mean, this is a, I forget if they're steel or iron, but the diffs are super thick, these are. They're like 45 kilos fully built. But that case in itself is probably a good 10 or 12 kilos, but I've never seen a, a gap in a diff like that before. I think that's actually quite thin. Whoa. Yeah, that is, I don't think that's gonna hole itself, but good, that is. That is some serious thickness of either metal displacement or corrosion growth there on the diff area. You can see somebody's had some serious trouble before undoing the diff drain plug and the filler plug. Look how rounded that filler plug is where it's been hammered with a chisel, chisel marks there to get it undone and probably then done back up, uh, not even replaced, which is a shame. But that shows you how thin and narrow the outer edges that it's gone and the fact that somebody's used, had to use a chisel to open it. 
Um, we've got various few things fixing wise that have been fitted either incorrectly or just poorly going around the car like the v-brace mounting area bolt that's obviously snapped it should be an m10 so it's now been drilled out somebody's putting a, an m8 in there with a nut on the top but the bolt is so close to the diff input uh, dust shield it's obviously not touching but wow it is close so um, that is a, a concern which obviously needs this item, the new push rod, either heli coil or time cert repaired or even just replaced for a new one because that's obviously not an original finish. The V-brace itself is structurally cracked and broken but like I said we're not really concentrating on hardware because you can just buy new or spare or replacements or have them powder coated. It's the chassis which you can't do anything with. Talking about hardware, probably one last thing I'm just going to mention about the hardware. This is a two millimeter thick stamped plate, reinforcement plate. I mean, that one's nasty and quite rusty, but that one, I've never seen one before that's gone actually hold itself. Like I say, it's two millimeters thick. That is significant thickness and it's just got nothing left of it. It's, uh, it really has suffered badly with corrosion. So going back to the chassis, which is the absolute priority on all cars to try and save them from themselves because you can't just go and buy another chassis yes you can reshell a car but you're going to be paying upwards of a thousand two thousand pounds just for the shell and then all the labor to swap it over plus you inherit the chassis number the reg number and the mileage and the year whereas this car for example a 2005 with 74,000 miles is a desirable car so it's this sort of thing that needs attacking and, and solving before the car gets uh, sort of um, killed off so to speak so here we can see where corrosion is been growing underneath the seam sealer line where this outer seal panel meets the floor pan and uh, and this has been going on for a long time because this is naturally cracked in this area to expose all the horrors underneath. And again, if we just start peeling around that area, you're just going to start seeing constant corrosion where originally it looks fine. That seems to be looks good, but you can see it's breaking out just there as well. So underneath there will be full of corrosion where it's just given up. The sealer just says, I can't grow or expand anymore. The, the corrosion wins and it just sort of, like a boil, it just sort of explodes and breaks itself off. And that's what we're seeing where all this seam sealer, which should be relatively straight, is all bubbly and stained with an orange sort of finish, which just tells us that it's got the corrosion growth underneath it. Staining is this sort of thing here. All that there is underneath there is corrosion, which is moving along and channeling its way through. Fuel tank strap bracket there, which is uh, just as flaky as the rear ones. Those are gonna be completely dead and wouldn't be surprised that during the process of removing that, whether this bulkhead holds itself just because well, that's just what happens when you try and separate corroded pieces. I don't think I've seen a battery tray, going back to this battery tray, we didn't talk about it too much. I don't think I've seen one this corroded, uh, or even if not for a long time, I'm quite expecting there to be a hole in that battery tray, not there, but behind this bracket. Once we take this bracket off, that is serious corrosion. Um, and you obviously have to uh, drill out spot weld if you can locate them, or if not, you are just belt sanding the spot weld out. Again, if you can locate them, once this, the corrosion has changed the shape of the metal so much, and being that it's so thin and the parent metal, in this case, the battery box tray, will also be seriously thin, it can just quite easily hold itself. Talking of uh, corroding, I know it's going back to a fixing, but that should be a nut, a stud hanging out of the chassis on the exhaust mount. Um, and that there should be a nut on the outside of it, but it's just grown and just got uh, so loose. I don't think that's ever been off because it never would have survived. Look how m little work it needs to just loosen all that nut corrosion off. And there we go. We can see a little bit of the nut remaining, but it probably isn't hex shape and it certainly isn't a 13 mil now. It's probably more like an 11. So that sort of thing isn't going to be coming off. That will need attacking with a belt sander or something else to remove the broken nut. We've got the same on all of them, to be honest. So that's all six of them are gonna need some serious work. That's even just the, the start of it, which is to get the nuts and bolts off, which um, similar sort of thing we've had with the, at the back of the car, the um, carbon canister plastic cover, where these studs, there's no thread left on these because the nuts were so corroded, they just basically fell off similar thing towards the front when we get a little bit forward 
down there with these under trays that we'll go into. But going back to these floor pan areas, this was a 25 mil natural grommet hole that BMW installed on both sides, the right hand side. You can see that's the carpet there. Grommet's probably not been there for a while because uh, the metal itself, the, that's the floor pan of the vehicle. I'm just moving, you know, with my hand there. Not that you would really um, suffer too much of an injury if you would crash a vehicle just because corrosion was in this area. But what I'm trying to point out, I suppose, is if uh, some of the floor pan of the vehicle is that soft, if you were to have a side impact, knowing that there is corrosion else of that similar nature elsewhere, you know, there is more chance that the car is actually going to suffer um, a buckling issue where it probably wasn't designed to. So that's another reason why some of this corrosion needs to be solved. And like I say, surface corrosion isn't the end of the world. If that was able to be removed and neutralized, which we commonly do on the 46s and other vehicles, that's not the end of the world, but it's the trapped corrosion, which is the biggest problem on all vehicles and provides us and most restorers with big problems. So trapped corrosion is a perfect example here of an E46 chassis leg on the right hand side. Um, initially it just looks, well it's got corrosion around the outside. Most people would just think, well that's fine because you would just knock off all this loose corrosion, spend a few hours even with a wire wheel and just take off this surface corrosion. But the surface corrosion is only half of it. Uh, trapped corrosion is where you've got panel overlaps uh, here's another example here where this is the floor pan and this is the transmission tunnel supporting bracket. And you can see the bubbling nature of where the corrosion is growing underneath this way and causing the seam sealer to delaminate off the floor pan. But as well as us taking the surface corrosion off, what are we going to do? I pose the question to anybody really who, who thinks this is a straightforward process. What would you do with the corrosion which is underneath that panel and on top of that panel? So we're talking in this strip here. If you could imagine see through that panel, underneath it is that panel and it's going to be just as violently corroded but yet you can't get to it because it's spot welded together. Same thing if you look down this chassis leg, you can see it's a hollow, that section there. If you had a special tool, you could probably get down there, but you can't even get a finger in. So you're not going to be able to take out all the corrosion which is in that chassis leg. And you certainly aren't going to get any of the corrosion out which is on the contact patch. So from there to there, all the way down is the contact patch where the seam sealer, sorry, the chassis leg is spot welded to the floor pan. And again, you can get rid of the surface corrosion, but how do you get to it inside there? Well, the only option is to replace panels or certainly recondition panels. And that means cutting these panels off. As drastic as it sounds, it's chassis leg removal. It's either buying new panels from the manufacturer, in this case, BMW. That is how uh, a restoring uh, process would have to be. If the panel is too affected to reuse, which this one might be, it might be salvageable, but whether it gets reused or replaced, it still has to come off the vehicle. There is no way you can leave corrosion underneath contact patches and call it a success or even call it a restoration or a repair because it will just come back. There is no real way around it. Same thing here when I outline the edge of the transmission tunnel supporting bracket, there's the join line at the end of it and then it goes down that way and all this staining under here is the corrosion which is rife under here. Um, there is no nice way to put it, but certain cars, and I'm afraid this one, it's, uh, it's horrible to say, but it is riddled with corrosion underneath trapped panel areas. So this is gonna need some serious thought, attention, and decide what route is best to go. Because there are many ways to approach this, there are basic ways to keep this car going for a few more years, or there's cars to keep this on the road for another 20 years with restoring techniques. Then moving down to the sort of central front areas of the underside, there's the gearbox and the catalytic converters here. We've got significant corrosion growth, which has been overpainted. So somebody who has been aware of this, um, over the, the grommet holes here where the side skirts go on. So that area, I can guarantee you won't be a circle anymore once you start bare metal and all that. Um, and the same with around that one as well. And then we get to the front jacking points, which are also bubbling. And like I say, have been overpainted. So this area is where there's paint. I don't know how long ago, it might have been a few years ago, but that's also a hole. And that looks like some form of filler. Maybe not but it is flexible 
and you can just see here there's a hole developed in the edge of the seal and like that join line there is where the floor pan starts so we're getting close to the carpet area so that area needs cutting out and fabrication similar things with the edges here that's not the end of the world but in the join section it will be between the two layers and then obviously all this area is weak as well where it's been corroded and now the front edge uh, is have had some sort of uh, some section cut off probably in preparation for some seal work to be carried out um, as they typically go on that lower edge there underneath the wing panel you can see the edge there where it would have been corroded is gone and it's had some temporary sort of holding area like I say in preparation probably for the fact that it was coming to us to have some um, work carried out so let's go and have a look on the other side the right hand side down that outer right hand side seal probably surface corrosion here but still strong violent color corrosion which is weakening the structure of the vehicle sections of it crack in there through the paint this isn't even seam sealer this is just paint that's expanded that much due to the corrosion problem here massive bubbles here which these are really important these holes because that's where the side skirts clip into as soon as you take the green grommets out which are something like eight or nine mil holes and you wire wheel all that off that hole will not be a hole and therefore the green clip fan can't go back in and therefore the side skirt can't clip on so you've got many problems even just with basic corrosion around grommet holes that will cause hours of work needed fabrication work to reinstate metal and Correct, create the correct hole with a jig to make sure they're all correctly evenly spaced that's every single one going along I mean you get into a point where this car really does need seal sections replaced entirely when you think about the rear seal and the jacking point and the end of it that's gone and in holes and then sections of every single every single piece it's crunchy I wouldn't be surprised if I could probably put my finger through that Every section of uh, green grommet location is gone. And, um, and then the same with the front edge under here. You know, that's just as strong cracked corrosion under there, possibly some filler, I'm not sure. Yes, that's definitely some form of strong filler that won't break off. And then the front edge of the jacking point as well, which is, um, you know, that does warrant probably a whole seal. And if not a whole seal, then at least sections of a seal. But I don't know at this stage what would be quicker, probably, replacing a whole seal trouble is bmw only sell them in great long pieces with sections of the a pillar and a little bit of the rear quarter panel they're very expensive and the copy ones don't fit very well so between a rock and a hard place when it comes to that that's just one problem to contend with when you think about that chassis leg that we were talking about that started back here towards the underside rear of the car and goes all the way under the driver's seat to the front of the car and then keeps going, I mean, even down to there, which is hidden well normally by the wheel arch liner, that's corrosion trapped, which is gonna have a concern and problem, which means chassis leg needs taking off, really. Front grommets have got problems, which only looks basic, but that will be probably out of round problems. And I've never seen corrosion there before, which is in a random area just off of the chassis leg where it's obviously growing through the seam sealer section into the floor pan so that's going to be significantly weak and that's very close to the driver's footwell areas where your heels would be resting for the pedal operation so you don't want anything weak there near your knees or feet or areas you don't really want any weakness on any car but certainly not near the driver's footwell area um, metal under tray well that's not the end of the world because with hardware we would take that off and replace it for a new one Certainly corrosion up in areas that you don't normally see, up in the transmission tunnel area, uh, even just a bit underneath the matting here for the insulation. Um, and then moving on to the front of the vehicle. Now there's not a great amount of metal at the front of the vehicle. We've got the chassis legs which rise up from the bulkhead and go forward to the front of the vehicle underneath the radiator area. And then you've got the turrets and the sections which the springs uh, and the top mounts bolt into. And although we've got surface corrosion here, it's up in these voids here, which are the real problems. These are pressed panels to give the structure and support of the compression and rebound of the spring, sprung energy. But up in there, you can see the colors of that. You, can, no, you can't really even get finger in there, so you're not really gonna get any tools in there. Again, the only way to do a true corrosion removal process is, is sort of attack it as if, uh, if you are restoring the vehicle, which is panel replacement or panels off and then recondition. So that's drilling out all the spot welds, the MIG welds, 
and then removing panels, treating the corrosion, and then re-welding them back on, or even new panels if you can get them. Um, similar thing with the brake pipe brackets under there, that's only a minor one and it's a bracket so that it can be drilled off, uh, aqua blasted and then re-welded back on if it survives. Front of the vehicle as well has got decent corrosion which isn't um, usual on the chassis leg area. So we've got the anti-roll bar mounting point here. Again, ignore the hardware because this can just be replaced for a new one or refurbished or powder coated. Ignore the subframe here because it's just able to be replaced. It's a hardware component. But the chassis leg here is part of the structure of the vehicle. And although that might be surface corrosion, these edges are where two join metals join together. You've got the inner chassis leg and then the outer chassis leg and that Again, that seam section there is just completely full up of corrosion. And if we tackle the outside and then that outside and then paint it or seal it, all we're doing is trapping corrosion in, which is between the joined layers. There is no easy way to get trapped corrosion out. And I might not be explaining it as best as possible, but hopefully you can understand it, that external corrosion is doable. Trapped internal corrosion between metal overlay and panels is a big problem and it very rarely is straightforward and therefore that means time consuming and it also means costly unfortunately up in there between sort of layered panels so there is a real challenge on the, on our hands here with this vehicle um, even if it's just the strip down process which remains battling through corroded studs and nut fixings which you can guarantee aren't going to come across part they're m5 five mil thick they are just going to snap straight off of the chassis which means then obviously welding on new section studs and pieces some of these fixings haven't really even got hex heads anymore and some of them just pull straight out so here we've got an example of where the wheel arch liner has just pulled itself straight out of the um, chassis leg here where there should be what we call a pressed all cage clip. So it's a specific square hole which BMW produced in the chassis leg. There's various ones of them. And there's a special clip that presses into that and springs open and then has a hole for the screw to fix into. You can just about see the hex middle of it there, but we couldn't even get anything onto it. And this thing was so weak, it effectively was flapping. So that means that that hole in the, or that square in the chassis leg is not the correct shape anymore. So that in itself just needs cutting out and then making a new square and inserting new metal to get the clip in. And that's just one clipping point there. That work in itself might take an hour, it might take more than an hour. And that's just one clipping point out of many on the vehicle that are holding things together. So there are many challenges to come, uh, that be taken um, or consider certainly before venturing into uh, such a, an unknown length and cost of a restoration on an E46 M3 nowadays but this is just a, a very very long intro video to the start of what's going to be probably quite an interesting and in-depth process. No not doing this one definitely not doing this one this was far too corroded once the owner had seen the intro video we created quite rightly they were horrified with it and thought it would be better off to cut their losses and move on to something else so they offered it up for sale we purchased it and uh, we are going to repurpose the vehicle or it's running gear it's guts it's uh, it's engine and drivetrain are very good they've only got 70 something thousand miles so um, that's going to be reused in an m3 touring project that we're creating so click the link on the top right to see what we're doing.